but not the mic. <laughs> Hi guys, good morning. I'm so excited to get to speak to you guys again today. Um, as I was praying into today and what to talk about, um, in prayer I saw two visions that God gave me. One was all of us together and the second was I saw um, they're kind of being like a prayer team afterwards to just pray for whatever's going on in your life or other people's lives. So I'm actually going to step out in faith and put that into practice today and ask you to be a little uncomfortable with me um, and get up and stand up right now and actually come forward to these first, what, three or four rows. And we're gonna do family style today. So if, you're, if you wanna come up to these pews we have right here, this whole row is empty, this whole row is empty, and we're gonna sit next to each other and be like a little family in a living room. This is perfect. <laughs> Hi, Gia, I like this. I can actually see all your faces. You might be sitting next to someone completely new. That's okay, get to know them. Or maybe you've known them forever, and that's okay too. Maybe it's your mom. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so fun. Oh, this makes my heart so happy. Um, all right, so as we're all close, um, the second thing too that I mentioned is at the end when I finish speaking, um, we are going to have some people up here to just pray and we're gonna have music going on. And I just wanna encourage you guys to come up and just get prayer. If there's someone on your heart you wanna pray for or if there's something going on with job, work, just family life, whatever it is, um, it's just so beautiful to be in unity with each other and partner together and bless each other on Sundays. All right, before I start, may I pray for us? Jesus, I just thank you so much for today. I thank you for the beautiful things that you have in store for us. God, I ask that you just open our, our hearts and our ears to just hear from you today. That you'd speak something very specific and fresh into each person's heart. That something would just stand out to them today that you specifically want them to hear. So I just thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. So I'm going to start off with talking about a dollar bill. And I have this dollar bill to give away to someone who can tell me what is on the top left hand corner of this dollar bill. Does anybody know? Do you know? No, something else. It's Greek. It's in Greek, and it's right next to the eagle. It was put there in 1782. Anything come into mind? <laughs> Gio, you didn't learn this in history class? <laughs> All right. Wow, I'm surprised nobody knows it. This is interesting. All right, well, we're gonna learn some new things today. All right, so up on the top left corner, it says, I'll read it to you, e pluribus unum. Does anybody know what that means? No, all right, so <laughs> we've got the dollar bills that we're walking around. Do you know? Yes, okay, you're my, you're my woman today, awesome, thank you. So, <laughs> in 1782, this was put onto the dollar bill. Does anybody know why? Probably not, okay, because you didn't know it was even on there. Uh, <laughs> so, it was specifically put on there in 1782 when all of the different states became united as one. It was around the Civil War times, and this specific statement means out of many, one. So out of many states and out of many different people comes one. That is why we're called United States, united as one. So that was put onto the dollar bill. It looks like I will keep it since none of you guys could guess it. <laughs> Um, but we have this idea of out of many coming one, and that's so symbolic to America, right? It's a place with so many different cultures and people and states that are all coming together and being united as one. And it also is a really good representative of God, 
right? Because with God, we have many but one. We have Holy Spirit, we have Father, we have Jesus. It's three entities, but all in one, okay? So that's the Trinity. You know, some people talk about the Trinity like an egg, too, right? You have the shell, which could be like the Holy Spirit. Then you have the yolk and the egg, like God and Jesus. Now today, I'm not actually gonna get all into the Trinity and the makeup of it, but let's just assume, okay, the Trinity, it's three in one, correct? So today, I don't wanna talk about why that is, well, I don't wanna talk about what that looks like, but I wanna talk about why the Trinity. Like, why would God, at the beginning of creation, wanna start off with the Trinity? Like, why did he create the Trinity? And as I was thinking more upon it, some things that came to mind was one, it's a beautiful representation of three entities or like three being one, right? He, from the beginning of the world, sets this example of what it looks like when people are in perfect unity, in perfect unity together. Um, And, hmm. yeah, I think one of the, other big reasons that God started off with the Trinity is to show the importance of relationship and to show how we can all function together and work together. I'm gonna go ahead and slip to the next slide. Now I wanna talk a little bit about Genesis, but before I read Genesis, so we have this idea of the Trinity, right? Three in one and God showing this perfect unity And out of that place of perfect unity, he ends up creating so many beautiful things. He ends up creating this whole world, right, of nature, of beauty, of animals. But something very specific that he creates, right, is man and woman. And in Genesis 1, 26 to 27, we see that he, I don't know if you guys can read this, but it says, then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Okay, so we see this beautiful image of how out of this place of the Trinity, which is perfect unity between God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus. They create man in the same image of us wanting to be in perfect unity with each other. Female and male, he creates them to be in perfect unity with God. And we see in the Garden of Eden, they, in the Garden of Eden, they are in perfect unity with God and with each other. And then you have the fall, right? And you guys are pretty familiar with that, right? They walk in sin, then there's broken relationship. And we go through the Bible for many chapters, many books of the Bible where there's this brokenness. There's brokenness in relationships with God, but then you see that brokenness gets played out in so many relationships throughout the Bible of brokenness. But then God, obviously he sends us Jesus. He brings that restoration through Jesus to be able to fully unite us back with Jesus and with each other and kind of bring that perfect unity back into play. Then we also see in John 17, the focus text of today, Jesus is saying, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. So this idea of just being in perfect unity, and the reason for that, it continues on to say, is may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. So this is Jesus' prayer. He wants humanity to be fully connected and one with them again and one with each other, just as the Trinity, just as Jesus is one with the Father. And that was his whole plan, to bring that unity back into being. And the big purpose for that was to bring glory, (laughs) to bring glory to God. When we are in perfect relationship with each other, people can see the joy and the life that's created. And when we're in perfect unity together, we can like accomplish so many things, right? When you're actually working together, you're on the same team, you're on the same side. And it kind of reminds me actually of 
sports and teams, right? When you are playing on a sport or team, who's been on a sport team before? All right, cool, so most of you. Um, when you're on a sport team, when someone on your team is trying to do their own thing and not being part of the team, what happens? <laughs> you ultimately fail, right? So you see this disunity happen and you fail. You can't accomplish the goal. You're not gonna get that far because someone's either bog ho ball hogging or something's going on where it's just like creating disruption. And then all of a sudden, all your focus and attention from winning the, the game goes on to your team and trying to like figure out what's going on there before you can really win and be successful. All right, and so the same kind of goes with our Christian walk. When we're not walking in unity with each other, it gets really difficult. And we kind of shift our eye and focus from bringing the kingdom of God onto earth, onto like, oh no, I'm just gonna like be so concerned with this relationship and this and all that stuff. And that's why it's so important for us to be walking in one team, one accord, in unity with each other, going towards a goal, right? Sorry. So back to this idea of when we're in perfect unity, we can really be able to like move mountains, so to speak. And I guess the next question is like, what does that look like, again, to live in perfect unity with each other? Well, some things that come to mind for me is standing right before God and before others, resolving conflict when there's any conflicts going on in your lives. Um, it also looks like loving others and championing them on in whatever their dreams or goals are. It looks like laying down your life for another person, even when it's uncomfortable or hard. It also looks like weeping with those who are weeping and mourning with those who are going through difficult times. It looks like rejoicing with those who are rejoicing and really celebrating them in that. It also looks like abiding in God and really resting and trusting in Him and letting His heart change yours um, when maybe there doesn't feel like perfect unity in some of your friendships or relationships. Next little side. <laughs> okay, so again, it's this idea of community. It's that, this idea of living one with God and through that place of living one with Him and abiding with Him, we're able to be in like perfect unity with others and really build strong communities, right? Coming in unity is community. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny and great and a good way to like just think of what community is at the core. Right? It's really coming together in unity with one another around something. And for us as Christians, right, today we're coming around the unity of just wanting to bring glory to God, to praise Him, to really like grow in our relationships with Him this morning and with each other. All right, so the next thing I wanted to touch upon is worship. So one of the things that is so beautiful that I've seen in worship and some of the most powerful times I've been in worship is when everybody is like standing and all singing their hearts out. Like have you guys had those moments? Maybe it's not worship, maybe it's something else coming to mind, but like I remember so many worship nights where everyone's just singing all along, their hearts are fully there, they're, they're aren't any people like distracted or just kind of sitting there twiddling their thumbs, but we're all fully engaged. And in those moments, I think it's so powerful because of this aspect of unity. I think it's because everybody's hearts are aligned. We're all like coming together around something and that's what makes it so powerful. It's not just, oh, the lyrics were especially good today or, oh, these chords are great. But I think it really is the hearts when there is perfect unity like it's powerful, and I think that's when like breakthrough happens and when we get to encounter God in new ways and new levels, when there's just this complete unity amongst everyone. Um, so the best thing we can really be doing for the world is really walking as one with one another. And the more we walk as one with one another, the more the world will get to see the glory of God. Just kinda like what it says, in John 17, 
Like he has given us the glory. And as we walk as one with one another, we really get to show the world that glory and that beauty of God. And that's what attracts people to coming to church too, right? They see God in us and the way that we interact with one another, the way that I don't treat you as a stranger, but I treat you as a sister. And I welcome you into my heart and actually really wanna know what's going on in your life. And that's what the church family is called to do. We're called to love and again, really lay down our lives for each other. Like it's uncomfortable, right? If someone's car breaks down and you maybe have to go and like give them some lifts or whatnot, but that's again what we're called to do. Or if someone's really busy as a single mom, like we're called to go and love them and like help them in those ways. There's so many different ways we can be doing this, but it's, I just wanna really be challenging you guys to find ways that one, Either you're not living in perfect unity with someone or with a vision, and if that's the case, get on board. Pray, have God change your heart or change that person's heart so that we can really be in unity with one another. Um, The second is, if that feels all good, then look for ways that you can keep unifying the body. Whether you're coming across people with different ideas or different denominations or different races or different genders, like find ways where we can really come and be united with the church in those different ways. Because I think sometimes also you see like segregation of like, oh, that's that church. Okay, they do this, we do this. Or that's like the young kids, we're the older. Or this is like the, I don't know, sketchy side of the city that we don't really go to and this is where I live. Or things like that. There's all these ways that we create divides in society, but I think God's so, his heartbeat is so for us to be one and to be united, especially as the church. Especially as the church. But even beyond that as well. All right. The last thing I want to (coughs) end with is Back to this idea of being on the same team, right? So if you're playing on a sports team and you're all going towards a vision or goal, oftentimes when you're in sports, you're, you're competing for like a trophy or something, right? You're, you're competing for that like title. But in this game or in this life, we're not competing for trophies or those things of success. Our thing that we're competing for is instead to bring instead of bringing home a trophy, we're bringing the kingdom of God on earth. And that really is what our goal is, to let the world just know about Jesus. So in that perfect unity, let us go, change the world, go be light in the world, and really love others well. Sound good? Awesome. So I'm gonna pray for us. Um, But before I pray for us, there was one other thing I wanted to share is um, again, when I was in prayer about today, I asked God, hey, is there any other specific like words or things that you wanna share? Um, And one thing that came to mind, I don't know who it's for in the congregation, but um, this idea of like feeling hopelessness was coming up. And if there's anyone feeling hopeless today, I just felt like God wanted to encourage you that there's so much hope that he has in store for you. Specifically in Isaiah 61, that's what came to mind, of the fact that God came to bind up the brokenhearted, to set captives free, to bring liberty to those who are in prison. And that's all of what Isaiah 61 goes on to talk about, how the spirit of the Lord can bring all those different things. And through that, that fills me with hope, because it's like, okay, cool, like, if I'm in a place of feeling trapped, God can bring the hope in this area. If I'm in a place of feeling hopeless in, I don't know, feeling a broken heart, in Isaiah 61, it says God came to bind up the brokenhearted. So there's hope for that, that that's his heart and his intent to do those things, to really bring that full restoration of hope and fully restore people's hearts. Um, So yeah, if that spoke to you, bless you in that. Um, So now I would like to end out by having the four people I talked to come to the front. So Barbie, Ken, Julie, John. So they're gonna be up here and we're gonna be playing music and I want you guys to all come up
and receive prayer. It's okay if not everybody comes, but I want a majority of you guys to just come and receive prayer. The way it will work is music will be playing, and one at a time you'll come up and pray, and then you'll just kind of come back to your seat. Does that kind of make sense? It might feel awkward or uncomfortable at first, but again, this idea of unity, of let's be brothers and sisters, let's welcome people into our lives and like pray together. Like, this is such a beautiful thing. So if there was something on the message that spoke out to you of like, oh, I really want unity in this area, whether it's in my marriage or in this friendship or with certain coworkers or whatever it is, come receive prayer for that. Or if there's someone else in your family or that you know that you want prayer for, just come. Um, can I have like four brave volunteers that would maybe come up first? All right, come on up, come on up. Anybody else? <laughs> you want to come all right so once they go and sit next people come up and we'll do this for about five minutes Thank you. 